brought to you by Envision Clothing Company. Use my code Kelly10 for 10% off of your next purchase. Thank you. Three, two, one. Yeah, so like I think like the problem that I have with a lot of people that are that come on on here is that they they like they're so far away like this. They lean back like this. Yeah. Well, no, no, not so much like that. I was kind of exaggerating, but like if you talk like right in the camera, this sounds a uh, like it captures the sound so much easier. But anyway, uh, it's welcome back, man. It's like. I think it's been like what two years since we've done a podcast together or something? Roughly two years, yeah. <laughs> because uh if anybody doesn't know, uh me and Awaja, we used to like actually have our own podcast thing, but I think it just wasn't really working out because we were always so busy and, and we were actually doing it like uh, our own thing, so it was like, like much harder to kinda of get together and Yeah, it did yeah. not meet up with our schedules or anything like that and yeah, you know, shit happens. Am I allowed to swear on here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Swear away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, yeah, shit, shit happens, and, uh, yeah, it just didn't work out with our schedules and everything, but I, <laughs> this is one of the things I, I do actually miss, so. Yeah. yeah, it was good times, man. Like, I mean, I remember, like, we'd go on about, remember the one podcast we did? It was something we were going on about Trump, and. Oh, we had Trump. There was but that, Star was that? Wars. There was, a. Uh, uh, trending, uh, trending media. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I remember, uh, remember the one we went on? I think we went on about The Walking Dead for, like, we, we were talking about at least, about the subject Walking Dead for at least half an hour. About, like, see, and I think at the time, because this was two years ago, that would have been season seven, when Negan was introduced, and we were talking about, like, how, like, how good he was transferring from the comics to, um, to, from comic character to TV character. Oh, yeah. And I think that was interesting. But anyway, I think I got a new subject. It's the Avengers Endgame. Oh, that was just awesome. What did, I, you, what, what did you think about it? Well, I think I, I told you before, but um, I think, like, okay, before I share any spoilers... I think that it was really good. It was really awesome, sorry. It was really awesome, but I think the problem, and not, I don't think just me, what a lot of people had, uh, it was more the fact that um, I think a lot of people, when they saw the trailer, and we were discussing this before we went to go see the movie, I think a lot of the issues was a lot of people went to go see the movie, or they went to go see the movie, but when they went to see the trailer, the trailer just kind of gave you a glimpse of what the movie really was. Anyone watching this, there are going to be spoilers, so just a heads up. Yeah, so um, we're going to start talking about the spoilers now. So I'll put a link in the description of the video on YouTube, and um, and then I'll just put like the time lapse of whenever we're done talking about the spoilers, and then uh, you can just skip to that point if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want me... You don't want to hear any of the spoilers, so um, so here we go, spoiler time. Uh, I gotta say, right at the beginning, um, I did not expect that, and I remember you were telling me like it's not gonna be how you thought. Yeah. But when they first killed him, I was like, "What? Wait, what the fuck?" Like three hours, more like three minutes. Uh, but it was kind of cool because it it, it kind of it, it just led off from what just happened. Like it, it was just. It kind of leads off right from the get-go, and really, especially with Tony Stark, right? Because at the beginning, him and uh, Nakamura. Uh, oh, uh, Nebula. Nebula. Why do I? Like, I, I have the picture in my head of her, but I just can't. Like, I couldn't get the name down. Nebula, and they're kind of like screwing around. But to be honest with you, uh, with with the scene when they're like flicking the like the the like almost like a football. In the oh, end goal. was it? Was it a card? Was it a coin? I uh, I know was, there's there's similar names to uh, mirror it, but anyway, go on. Yeah, I think it was just like a it was like a paper or something. You can you like I know it's a game that people do play when they're bored. Something that people do when they're really bored, mind you, like stranded out of gas in the middle of space. Yeah, that kind of bored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah. at this point, like it'd be you might as well just play. Uh, 
like hockey with a buddy of yours. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, with uh, um, at that scene, it didn't seem. I was expecting the beginning to be very like almost like a depressing kind of feeling because I mean they kind of got to that point but like it started off very like not serious like they're joking around they're almost like a very comic relief kind of opening and I didn't <laughs> didn't really like that because like it it was almost like it started it ended off kind of depressing with Tony losing everyone and like Tony losing everyone and then seeing like Spider-Man. I think him watching Spider-Man go was like a big, was a big one for him. Cause it's like a kid. Right. And he really admired him. And so it ended off kind of depressing. And then it started off in this one, like uh end game started off kind of like a comic relief. Like, I don't know. You know, I do kind of agree with you there, Luke, but at the yeah. same time, how many days are, or- or something had passed, like, 22 or something like that. I mean, like, I think he was still sort of depressed about it, but he was, like, trying to make the best out of the situation like anybody else uh, would do, right? So, <clears throat> you're in there uh, trying to uh, get to uh, uh, Earth, I believe. I th- I'm just assuming it's Earth that they're trying to get to, you know. But then they end up running out of gas, you know, straining from the nearest, like, 3,000 light years from the near from the nearest 7-Eleven, as Tony Stark puts it. You have oh. to make the best out of that situation. So I think it's just sort of their minds just trying to cope with what just happened. You know, they're like in a sort of shock in a way. And then after that, uh, meeting Captain Marvel, her pushing them right back to Earth. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, and it was almost like... I just found Captain Marvel was almost like... What, what was her purpose in that movie? Really? I mean, she, she did didn't say have a whole lot, did she? No, she didn't, and that's one thing I did notice in the whole movie was she didn't really have purpose. I mean, be, to be fair, I think because they just introduced her own separate film um, before the movie came out, I think that that's one reason why it's like, you know, I would be a little concerned if you know you got a got a character like Captain America, and you know they just done three solo films with him. Or like his own his own story arc, and if they just didn't really throw him in the movie, I'd be like, okay, so you guys, how do you guys fuck up again? Already, right, you guys didn't put Captain Captain America in the movie, so I think like for that, you know, good thing that they had Captain America in there for a good amount, and I think like him in that movie kind of made up for Infinity War because in Infinity War he didn't really show up until the like. 30 minutes in at least maybe 25 minutes in in the, that that yeah was, and infinity war wasn't really a short movie either was it? no it wasn't but this one was this one was long this was one of the like lord of the rings long like you know yeah yeah i remember, I remember seeing that movie that was that was a long one too well if, if you go to even the extended cut that movie i i watched it on netflix one time because i was like hey you know what? i gotta sit through four hours of a movie i'm gonna do it <laughs> and the movie is actually four hours and I believe four hours and 21 minutes. And I mean, that's extended cut for uh, Return of the King. Yeah, that's right. I believe the the original cut was just uh, close to four hours, if not four hours at, on the dot. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, that's... Yeah, it's about, yeah, four hours and 21 minutes. I, 21 minutes. I think, excuse me, um, but yeah, like the whole, the movie w- overall was really good, I was kind of, I, I was kind of happy but sad at the same time with Captain America's story arc at the end, where he, he did what, he did what he needed to do was put the stones back in a way, and then do what he needed to do, like live his life, because that's the only way he was going to be able to live his life. And then still come back for like to see everyone, but he was just an old fart. So I kind of. I, I, I loved st- Banner Hulk in this movie. I did too because he was actually the Hulk. Yeah, it's like some straight out of a comic book, like right there. <laughs> yeah. So in the comics, is he always the Hulk? Is he in the comics? Well, some of them, yeah, I believe so. I believe there is a few comics where he is like Hulk slash Banner. Yeah. Uh, if you ever read. Um, the Wolverine, uh, Old Man Logan series. 
he actually has a family of of uh, Hulk slash humans who are just like born huge and green, but they they're they're like regular people. They can talk, they can communicate. They're not just big mean <clears throat> green rage beasts. Although that storyline is a, a completely fucked uh, different sort of story. <laughs> so that's like yeah. that's kind of weird. Uh, or like he he's kind of like a bad guy in that in that respect. Yeah, and I think with this one, I was kind of surprised what they did with them. I thought he would just be like Bruce, and then you, like when he get like when they need him to get big, like become Hulk, he would like <laughs> like transform back. But it's kind of interesting how and you know what I was really impressed with this. I'm guessing CGI. I was really impressed with the CGI how they made him actually look like Mark Ruffalo as a human. Like he had like the human traits, like as Hulk in most of the movies. When he transforms into Hulk, even in the first Avengers movie in New York, um, in that movie, they just made him, like, they, he kind of looked like Mark Ruffalo in a way, but almost just more, like, just very similar traits of his face, but it was almost like he was just Hulk. Totally different thing. But in this one... I'm not sure if because of what he explains how he like keeps himself always a Hulk, so maybe that's why he actually keeps the his physical traits, which naturally as an actor he does have the gray like, hair. Like he's wearing glasses and everything. Yeah, that's, I I think they did a good job of that in like the yeah. first couple of Avengers movie too, where like he did look like Mark Ruffalo, but like he was just like a pretty much. Uh, a huge green rage beast version of Mark Ruffalo, but like I like this where he's <laughs> he's able he's actually to... Mark Ruffalo. He's at a restaurant just eating like regular people food. Just <laughs> yeah, there's something very comical about that that I enjoyed. I laughed out loud. I think I believe when I saw that at the show with you. <laughs> yeah, well, remember the the part where you asked me like, who's that? In the, the one Iron Man suit you couldn't figure it out, and I was like, oh no, that that's that's Potts. Yeah, I don't really remember her just getting in a suit and then going to that particular place to fight. I didn't really understand. But that's something like an excuse. I I, I didn't like it. I didn't like that. I'd have to see it again to see if they, like, maybe did show a scene where she did go uh, to wherever they were. I don't don't think so. She just showed up with all the rest of them. Like, like, I mean, Spider-Man, Peter Parker kind of explained in the movie how he got there, like, he woke up and then realized that that he all I remember was I turned into dust and blah 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 and then and then I showed up here and like I I was all alone with with Doctor Strange and all that and then we like he kind of explains it but everyone I else think they all reanimated uh, on the planet that they died on so like but uh, I, I so it, for uh, uh, Black Panther it would have been Wakanda Wakanda, Wakanda. yeah and so uh, like. So it would have been like because like I noticed there's like some portals from like a lot of different places too where how did Doctor they... Strange just uh, made a portal to come on to uh, the huge battle with Thanos. That's right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's how I was wondering what the, what the portals. I was like, how did they use that? And I was like, right, the Doctor Strange. Yeah. But <laughs> okay. But yeah, going about pots. I don't. I get it that she would probably go help because anybody can really use the Iron Man suit. But even then, like Tony Stark's the, the like, one that how did truly she know, right? Yeah. Exactly. Like I, I'm guessing that he would have told her. But um, for a three hour movie, they really did a good job sharing a lot of the screen with all the characters and not just superheroes, but like the co like the co the co main characters. Like even uh, Fury came in at the end. It was kind of cool how they brought him in. But Samuel L. Jackson and he doesn't need big roles. He's in like pretty much every every movie. It's like that. Uh, it's like that scene from Ted Two. He's like, "Do you know who Samuel L. Jackson is?" And he's like in every movie. He's the black guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what movie was that? Ted, Ted Two. Oh yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I you ever seen any black guy in in, in in? Are you ever seen black guy in every movie? Yeah, or no, no, no. Him. He says, "You ever seen him in every movie?" He's the black guy. <laughs> yeah. He's always saying motherfucker in every movie or something. Yeah, like he, he can't act in uh, most respects. Um, he, he can actually act. Like, he is good. Rather than screaming motherfucker and everything. He's oh, yeah. Never confuse energy with passion. But, like, oh, yeah. even in him at his energetic points, I, I can respect just because it's entertaining. <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, I thought, yeah, what... Yeah, 
Captain Marvel, I didn't think was bad in this movie. Captain Marvel as a movie on its own, I didn't think was so great, but it's not definitely not the worst movie the MCU has ever made. For me, that would that belongs to uh, Thor: The Dark World. Yeah, I didn't like that one. I guess we'll. we'll... I didn't think it was terrible. Like like I said, Marvel at its worst is just okay. You know, just sort of forgettable. Right. Um, I guess, would you say we're done with the spoilers? Spoilers? I don't know if we're done with those. I, I think we're done with spoilers. <laughs> I don't want to talk anymore because then I feel like we'll just keep going on with the whole movie. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, sorry, you were saying I interrupted you. No, oh, I think I was finished. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I wonder, like, okay, so now they're going to come out with, um, because of that movie, now they're coming out with Spider-Man Homecoming. But I think not too many people are surprised that so. that all the characters were coming back in this one. Like it was already kind of confirmed. Um, it's far from home, by the way. <laughs> oh, did I say homecoming? Sorry, yeah. far from home. Um, I think that one's gonna be pretty good. I saw the trailer, and I think everyone's. If you know who Spider Man is, and you know who the villain the villains are, obviously the one green guy, you already know he's a villain. But in the trailer, it makes it look like him and Spider Man working together. I think what's going to happen is, so they're going to fight whatever the villains are, you know, whoever it is, because Fury uh, works with, uh, with Spider-Man. Um, but whoever they're going to fight, they're going to beat them in somehow. Who's the green guy? Mysterio. Mysterio. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal. He looks uh, like he's be pretty good in Mysterio. Yeah, I wonder how they're going to do with him. But, hey, you know what? I say let's do it. Fuck it. You know, give Jake Gyllenhaal the movie. I just hope he does good. Because he, he's a pretty good actor, but sometimes you get certain actors and they play certain roles and it's like, eh, I don't know. Because when they had um, the guy playing Falcon, um, he played as Batman too. Yeah. Falcon? Cal uh, Keaton. Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton oh, yeah, the he did Vulture, play. you mean. Yeah. Vul what did I say? Falcon. Falcon. I was about to say, Falcon. that's Captain America's partner. Oh, my God. Um, no, I'm but, an idiot. <laughs> no, it's all right, but uh, it's it's easier to confuse off for sure. Yeah, uh, Falcon is uh, is Captain the, Captain America's side. Vulture is a uh, Vulture it has yeah. more of like even a more evil title even. Yeah, so. yeah. So Vulture, sorry, uh, Michael Keaton. So, um, he, I thought that was a good role for him because for some reason it just it just worked out. He kind of played a very innocent. Not innocent, but like he played a very what he did, he did for his family. Exactly, it wasn't just I'm gonna be a bad guy and I'm gonna fuck shit up. No, it was uh, I'm doing this for my family. Yeah, I gotta do bad things, but this will help secure my family. Um, and that's kind of what reminded me of Sandman in the Spider-Man Three movie, or the original Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. Oh yeah, <laughs> you ever watched the uh, Spider-Man like YouTube poop videos? <laughs> They're so oh my God. fucking stupid, but they're so fucking funny. Like, I know. But just watch it. It's a time. <laughs> um, I know. Like it, I could go it on, looks I like something that hours. should be entertaining for a sixteen-year-old. But like to be honest with it, I think they're the funniest freaking thing ever. I mean, not all of them. Like some of them are really, really, really <laughs> stupid, and they're not funny. But there, there was the one where I, I actually never knew what they were. It just showed up because I think I was watching some Spider-Man stuff. And it came up, and I thought it was the funniest freaking thing in the world. But um, anyway, going back to the one movie. So I think with Jake Gyllenhaal, I think that he's... I think he, he'll do well. Me, that, That's the problem, is like with characters like that, it's not like you're just playing in a movie. Like you're, you're playing like an actual character. So to be able to play a screen character... Um, like it's like the guy that's playing the new Joker. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but with Jake Gyllenhaal, I just hope he does a good job, and it's not... I think he will. I hope, hopefully he doesn't give a bad taste in everyone's mouth, you know, like, it, it, hopefully it's gonna be... Hopefully he'll do well. And I think Marvel's done well with casting their characters anyway. Jake, I think Jake Gyllenhaal's a good actor. I, I don't he think, is a good actor. I don't actor. think he'll fuck it up or anything. I think he'll, I think he'll do pretty good. At the very least, okay, you know? Well... There's a lot of good actors and actresses, but there's been movies where I've seen some of them, and I'm thinking, uh, I don't know. Like, um, the one movie where it was, 
Angela Angelina Jolie. I can't say that. What what movie is this? <laughs> I'm so bad Jolie. with names tonight. Oh my god, what's wrong with me? Angelina Jolie and uh, what's that guy? The guy from Pirates of the Caribbean. Guy from Pirates of the Bill and Jack, I, Jack Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Okay. They were in a movie together, and it was terrible. They just didn't have the chemistry. In my opinion, anyway. Tourists? Tourists, yeah. Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah, it was just like... Something it was, like that, yeah. It was just one of those roles where it's like, what? Uh, um, but yeah, like, that's a good example. At least, in my opinion, I didn't think that was a good move for either one of them to start them together. It's uh, more of a moneymaker uh, Well, that's uh, what movies are. I mean, the movie business is money-making. I mean, that's how it is, right? Yeah, it's one of those... But then again, you do have directors that take... What they make very seriously, you know. Like well, you look very at Marvel. About it. Well, you look at Marvel. Everyone that's working those movies are passionate, and they don't want to fuck it up. Well, one because they want to make their money, but well, also yeah, they don't they don't want to fuck it up, and they want to make it good. I, I genuinely, I think, I believe they are genuine about wanting to please fans. Well, because if they can please the fans, then they can make more money and more money. I mean, you look at Avengers Endgame; it made like. <clears throat> It, it it broke the record box office of all time. It's been the highest pay, highest money made or highest, highest grossing, grossing. Gr- highest grossing film of all time now, and that's just insane. Um, <clears throat> just on op- opening weekend, and that's still not to say like the next couple of weeks. There's people that are still going to go see it, so they're not even done with those numbers. So it's going to be really hard to break that one. Um, but anyway, like I think. I think Spider Man, um, Far From Home. Too Far From Home? Far From Home. It's just Far From Home. Okay. Yeah, I know. God, I'm terrible with names tonight. Um, I think that movie's going to be. Uh, it's going to be good. I never been, like, I, I liked the first one. It was good, but I wasn't, like, I wasn't. It didn't make me. It didn't get me giggy, giddy. Like, it wasn't, like. No. Uh, no I wasn't, I wasn't excited, but I was like, oh, I, I'll, I'll go see it. But. To be honest, Luke. I think the last superhero movie I ever was truly invested in well, when it came out was the first Iron Man movie. That's how far gone the bubble has popped for me for superhero movies. But like my ultimate, uh, my all-time favorite superhero movie would have to be hands oh. down The Dark Knight. But like, yeah, after seeing like all the uh, Marvel movies, I mean, like I'm not saying I don't like them. I'm not saying I think they're terrible. It's just I I got all superheroed out after a time in my childhood, but what they're doing right now with Marvel, I think they're doing a very good job at. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Um, and I think with a lot of the Marvel movies now, they've been able to just. I I found in the past they've always been able they've always struggled with making them like there's always something wrong or they always make a mistake and i mean there's a good there's a good uh, history of that like for example you take like um the fantastic four that was I mean, i'm sure there's gonna be people that like the original ones or even the newer ones but even like um with the original ones a lot of people didn't like it and which they just, one fantastic four or fan four stick <laughs> fantastic four. Oh yeah um I think there was just something that they did wrong. The casting was wrong. Um, I think they just didn't... Uh, I think once Marvel Studios came in, that's where it really changed the whole ball game. And, um, like, it, like first time we see, you had, like, Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Everybody, a lot of people didn't like it. They made the they made Hulk. It was just named Hulk. Hulk with Air, uh, Eric Bana, which I didn't mind that movie. It was... I like the I like the soundtrack. I kind of like the story, but still, it wasn't totally there for me. You could even technically count it as a uh, as a starting point for the Hulk and the MCU series. Yeah, because it is actually the same story. If you look at it, it could technically be considered the first MCU movie ever made. Because it's if you look at the background story for the the Incredible Hulk, which is the MCU version. It's the same story, but only continued after the uh, the one with Eric Bana, Jennifer Connelly, and uh, Sam Elliott. So that is true. 
Like so, it's I, kind of like a sequel. I think it could be, but do don't quote me on that. Uh, I can I consider it a sequel, to be honest, because like, you know, it might as well be. It's the same sort of story, except like all that, uh, that fighting that fighting uh, plot point with Nick Nolte. So, oh, Edward Norton. Yeah. Yeah, and then the other guy that became like kind of like a Hulk, like he used the same kind of like serum to like make himself. Kind of like a Hulk. Yeah, that was his father, played by Nick Nolte in the 2003 version. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Man, that guy's got such, like, a voice, eh? He's got, like, one of those signature voices. Like, he sounds like he's been smoking for, like, six years or something. Because he's technically a crazy person. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. so. Um, yeah, so you have, like, the Hulk movies. Um, what else have they made? Uh, under Marvel, I mean, not DC. I got. I can't. I can't even think of any. Like they, I think. X Men. Uh, yeah, I guess that's on. Yeah, obviously, yeah, under Marvel, but that was more like, it was under the rights of. Um, uh, Twentieth uh, Entertainment. Twentieth Century. Twentieth Century. Yeah. Sorry. Again, there you go. I'm bad with names again. Um, with Twentieth Century Entertainment, but it, like they were still underneath Marvel. Um. I always liked all the X Men movies. To be honest with you, me too. I loved all of them. Like, yeah, X Men Two was kind of like uh, I don't know. Like X Men Three was even kind of yeah. X Men Two is considered to be like the most favorite of them all. Actually, really? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think I didn't even like today. It. Besides Logan, maybe would be probably my favorite X Men movie. I'm not too sure. But I def I definitely like X Men Two a lot. Like I know it's 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 it might not be the best. Maybe it's just a nostalgic thing for me. But I I have a bit of a soft spot for it. I don't know. My favorite my favorite X Men movie would have to be Days of Future Past, and I'll explain why. That one was a good one. It was well done. That's the first thing, in my opinion. Even though it is just the plot of Terminator 2, but like them for what it was, yeah. I thought it was pretty well done. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is true. But it was well done. That's the first thing. Second thing, I just like the idea of what they what they did with Logan going back and him being the only one. But just the soundtrack was a beautiful. The picture how it was done was beautiful, and how everything kind of like, um, and it kind of still made sense for the story. How technically Logan still got captured by. Um, uh, not general, Colonel, uh, Stryker. Colonel Stryker. He still got captured, right? Or was that Mystique that was actually... The X-Men timeline is so stranded. inconsistent. Well, I saw a video... You might as well not even, uh, try to, argue, try to make any statements or arguments against it. I mean... I mean, he has his bone claws in X Men: Days of Future Past, right? He, yeah. So, I, and he has his bone claws at the end of a uh, uh, the Wolverine too. So, how did he get his metal claws back for Days of Future Past? You know, so no. I try not try to overlook stuff like that because, like, it's not even <laughs> worth explaining. I know there's like so many theories. I just, I to me, after a point, I just pretend like it didn't even happen. Well, so, no, I'll explain to you. I think I got this down because I watched the video. Um, when the Logan movie came out a couple, like a year and a half, two years ago. Okay, so I think what happened was when they made the X Men Origins Wolverine movie, that was more of like just a bullshit standalone movie, to be honest with you. But then they kind of fit it in a way, if that makes any sense. So they show where he came from. He had the bone claws. He lost them. William Stryker um, gave him the 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 normal claws, and then that kind of explains for X Men. Yeah, but at the same time, remember at the end of the Wolverine where he still had his bone claws, but he ran into Charles Xavier and Magneto in a mid in a mid credit scene, where he's talking about uh, there's bigger things we have to deal with or something what? like that. I don't remember him having the bone claws in the. Yeah, at the end of the Wolverine, he had his bone claws back for uh, because he had them cut off. I think it's been a while since I've seen the movie, but like he definitely had his bone claws or at least one of his bone claws back i don't think so i don't i don't think so are you, are you sure yeah i watched it not too long ago 
He uh, he had his bone claw. He had his uh, sorry. He had his metal claws chopped off. Yeah, I remember that. And then like when he tried to like get his claws out again, they came back as bone, so he can regrow his oh. regrow his claws. But because he can't regrow animantium, they were just bone claws. But the rest of his skeleton remained animantium. Okay. Yeah, I don't know then. But I mean, I'll I'll explain as much as I know. So you get and then you get the X Men movie where. Charles Xavier helps them, and then they go through all that stuff with all the characters. The second one kind of leads on from there, and that kind of explain. You know, it's just the same storyline. And then he finds William Stryker, tries to figure out what was happening to him, gets his memories back. And then the third one's when they're trying to deal with, um, with uh, what's her face, the one redhead, Jean Grey. Jean Grey. Yeah. And then then there's a movie coming out soon about. Basically the same thing where they're trying to actually get it right this time. But um and try not to overthink the X Men timeline, man. It's so inconsistent. You know, like, I'm not overthinking, I'm just trying to explain <laughs> it. I'm gonna explain it from what I from my understanding. So then there's the third one and then they made the X Men Origins, I think. Yep. And then that one was more just like explained before, then it kind of you're still kinda of confused what happened. Then they made uh, X Men First Class, which showed Xavier and and um, and Magneto when they were younger, and how they kind of cross lines. And then yeah, they made the Wolverine. And then they made the Wolverine. And then you were telling me how he got this bone claws again somehow. I don't know. Maybe like somehow Magneto could have you know fucked around with the metal in his body and gave it like covered up. Yeah, I mean, who, who knows? knows? Man, it's up for interpretation. Who knows? With the yeah. inconsistencies of uh, the X Men. Uh, this is a film series. I mean, yeah. you could pretty much make up whatever story you want yeah, behind whatever it. happens. Yeah, fuck it. Do whatever you want. And then there came X-Men Days of Future Past where they, I think, essentially retcon X-Men 3 and X-Men Origins because yes. Jean Grey yes. is still alive. Yes. So, uh, what's this new one called? Dark Phoenix? If Jean Grey's not alive at the end of this one, I'm just, I'm going to have, like, a huge... <laughs> Like, comic book bubble right. of a, a question mark above my head. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, I... Okay. I, I Now I'm kind of mind-fucked right now, because now that you explained that, I totally forgot. Okay, yeah, that's right. If she dies, how's that gonna... Okay, so... I don't think... I, I don't think they'll kill her off in Dark Phoenix, because it wouldn't make sense for, uh, at the, at the end of X-Men, Days of Future Past for her to still be alive. Right, because this Even is like... she sacrificed herself at the end of X-Men 2. Okay, so in this one coming up, I think what they were trying to do is, they're trying to do what they should have done when they made X-Men 3. They should have never done that X-Men 3, right? They should have done that maybe in like... Maybe they could have used it as a... Like a back... Like they could have used it as an origin story with her and then show what happened then, you know, whatever. But yeah, so I think what they're... So... I think they're trying to re they're trying to make replace the mistake they made in X Men Three. That's pretty much exactly what they're trying to do, I believe. So, but because they're following the storyline right up to of, them going into from, space and everything. Yeah, they're trying to follow the storyline of the of the Ultimate Universe or like the Ultimate. Um, Was it the Ultimate Universe? I just know there's an original comic book where. Uh, the Dark Phoenix story uh, there is. Was actually came, did actually come from, and I know that she did go into space and uh, somehow ended up turning into this Dark Phoenix character. I'm, all I know is that they're trying to set it right because of Fire Phoenix, they teased at the end of X-Men 2, didn't show up in X-Men 3, and I think they're just trying to right that wrong, you know, by telling mm. the correct... Um, uh, Dark Phoenix storyline that was in the comics. I've never read it. I only know sort of what's what it's about. Yeah. Um, but I know that it involves her being in space. And, uh, fuck. Yeah. Man, they really mind-fucked everybody on this one. Yeah, man. Like, like I said, don't try to look too much into the X-Men franchise. <clears> they <throat> really... Uh, <laughs> they, they really messed up a, a lot of the timelines and stuff. Yeah, I think... Well, okay, I think, I'll, okay, so they had Days of Future Past, where they showed a lot of the younger, uh, like, they, they showed everyone younger again, and then they, from that one, there's, um, 
uh, X-Men Apocalypse, which kind of leads off from uh, Days of Future Past, like the same kind of uh, trilogy, like trilogy or the same kind of like uh, story. But then they kind of go back in back in time again in a way. Like they they're not tra- like they're not trying to travel back in time, but they're just taking the story and going back in time. So they're showing Charles Xavier again, young but getting older, and then his and then Jean Grey and and Cyclops and everyone as kids. And then, all right. So there's Apocalypse. Did they make any more? Or is this? Yeah, this is the next one. And this shows well, you them. If you want to count the Deadpool movies, <laughs> true. Yeah. True, but we're not gonna fuck Deadpool right now. I mean, he's awesome, but fuck Deadpool right now. Uh, so you got that okay? So this one here is like a continuation of X Men Apocalypse because obviously they have the young Jean Grey, the young Storm, the young Cyclops. Yeah. Yeah. So they have all of them. So, but the only yeah, it's weird because they're trying to replace the X Men Three story with with Jean Grey. So it's like. I think I it's, I think that, it's all to do with X Men Days of Future Past, man, because they changed the past. So it would, if you think about it, technically change the outcome of the future. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. So I think maybe that was kind of smart. So that's how they day. ended up retconning uh, X Men Three and X Men Right, because Jean Grey was actually alive in 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 Days of Future Past at the end. Right. Yep. Okay, so then it's kind of like they can they could do that if they want to. Oh we yeah, know, and Scott right. Summers slash uh, Cyclops was alive too. So right, and, so yeah, and Beast. Yeah, though he didn't really die at any point. So right, but because at the end of the Days of Future Past, they have the the older Jean Grey. I can't remember the actress's name. Oh, you just love analyzing the X Men franchise. Oh, fucking love it, love it, man. Um, but so at the end of the Days of Future Past movie, they have that like they have Jean Grey as as that original. The original actress, and then Cyclops, obviously the original actor. And um, then when they had the the younger actors playing as the younger characters, um, so yeah, it wouldn't really make sense for them to kill kill her off because if they do in the Days of Future Past, showing her in present time wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. Essentially, so because they're taking the originals, they're taking the the. The, the timeline that they redid, or redid because of what Logan did to stop. Oh, fuck. There was just too much. Like yeah. Like I just said, you're going to lose yourself. Yeah, so you know what? I think, think, I think I'm much. done. It's like that scene from uh, Austin Powers. And try not to think about it too much. That goes for you too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, fuck it. I, I, can't, I can't do it anymore. Oh, God, I've gone cross-eyed. <laughs> yeah, I'm done talking about X-Men. I remember I was, uh, I think we are going to discuss about uh, the Joker, the Joker movie. Now, I know... Walking Phoenix. Walking Phoenix, man. Method actor, perfect for the role, in my opinion. And from all the trailer reactions I've seen, everybody's just mind blown. I understand what you said, that he's got too much makeup and he's going to look too much like a clown. But yeah, but that might not be the final look of him. True, true. They could like it could just show him like when he finally becomes crazy and he just has naturally had whoops, they naturally <laughs> they naturally have the makeup. He already has the makeup that he would normally have on, and then maybe he might tweak it up a little bit halfway through the movie once he starts actually killing people or whatever. I mean, I'm not trying to spoil the movie because there's no, I don't think it's too much of a surprise what he's gonna do when he goes. Fully crazy. Oh, he's gonna go ape shit and kill everybody. Yeah. Um, in the trailer is a scene where when he gets punched on the train. Do you remember that? Yeah. And then he starts running. He starts running away. And then there's a scene where he's like basically he's a hundred percent crazy now. Like he goes completely insane. He's walking he's looking at himself in the mirror in the bathroom. And I think that part is kind of signifying that that's the part where he's probably going to kill his gut. I, I'm, I'm pretty certain that's what's going to happen. He's going to get punched, get up, freak out, somehow kill them. And then he's got to run because he's freaking out. He's, he doesn't want to get caught. But then once the scene where it shows him in the bathroom, it, it, I mean, trailers can make you think whatever you want. But I think that's what's going to happen. He's going to run. 
and then he's gonna finally realize because if you look at him in the trailer when he does not the paint, he looks he looks like um he looks almost like he's he's hunched over and he's he has almost like that feel sorry for me kind of look. Like he, he doesn't have any confidence when he's walking, but towards the end of the trailer when he's actually being the Joker, um, you see him how he's all his back's nice and straight and he's doing like he's very loose and he's very he has that joker kind of like like uh personality and he's very loose and he's he's very joking around and he's very you know, he is what we consider the Joker. Yeah, I so mean, it's interesting I mean, how I hope he ends up being better than the Jared Leto's Joker. I oh, mean, I like Jared Leto when he came out, but then after I thought about it, I'm like, he wasn't really that great. No, I don't think <laughs> he was so either. Bad, actually. I, how like, I... not in a good way, but like terrible. <laughs> well, a lot of people are like, "Oh, you just didn't see enough of him." Like, no, I saw enough of yeah. him. Like that terrible laugh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think. I mean, like, come on. I don't mind Jared Leto, but like, his Joker was god awful. Well, I'll 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 help you. I hope this Joker that. actually ends up like being the real Joker, and then um. Okay. Well, uh, this uh, Jared Leto Joker ends up being uh, oh, which Robin was it that ended up turning into the Joker? It's, it's been a while since I've read the comics or like seen any animated uh, movies, but. Okay, let me analyze what you're saying. So, you know, the first part I'm going to say, I think with Jared Leto's Joker, I think more how I see it is he played more the character versus being the character. And I think that's what Walking Phoenix is going to do so well. And this, uh, this is the second part I'm going to say, is because Walking Phoenix is a method actor. And that's perfect to play as a Joker because... Like I said, when Jared Leto played the Joker, he played the character. So he played what what the Joker is. So yeah, he looked like a Joker because he had the he obviously he's dressed up, but he looks like the Joker and he I think he put his effort in to be kinda of like Joker, but he didn't become the Joker. Like Heath Ledger. Heath it, Ledger, it, I don't think anybody will Nobody top will ever top him. Maybe Joaquin Phoenix, but we'll see. Like I mean I think Walking Phoenix will be good, but to top Heath Ledger, I don't, I don't know, know. Like Heath Ledger, I mean, for sure, tops I mean, everybody right much now. Like a clown, obviously doesn't help yeah. his chances, but like still, I think I think as an origin story, he will do pretty good. I yeah, um, but hey, you never know. But as of right now, Heath Ledger will always be the Joker that we know because he just there's just something that he did just, and I I feel bad because he died because of that. Well, not because of that, but. They think that it, it was a contribute, a contribute to his death, um, because of because of what he did what, to Jared get. Jared Leto's Joker. No, um, oh. he fledger when he died, because oh, yeah. he was doing all the drug over. He got a drug overdose. I think that's what it was. I think he accidentally overdosed on sleeping pills. If I remember correctly, don't quote me on that, but that's that's just how I remember it. He, yeah, I think so. Can you imagine if if he survived and they did like the Dark Knight Rises? And oh, then... his career career would have launched like for real. I well, mean, not... he was uh, he was really uh, really good in the Dark Knight. Like, well, and I think uh, I think like he they would have probably brought him back for the Dark Knight Rises. Like you know when the scene when Bane like make lets all the prisoners out. Obviously, he would have gone out and then. But, oh, man, that would be really weird to bring that him scene in. with the Scarecrow, yeah. I think, maybe even they Scarecrow, would, man. Had a, would have had a in mind for the Joker. Yeah, but even Cillian Murphy, if that's... Killian Murphy. Killian Murphy, yeah. Man, he even did really well as Scarecrow in that movie, like, as much as he had a really small part. Yeah. But that was, he, I really like him as a he villain. He is a good actor. He is a good too. actor, too. And he did really good as... Funny thing is that he originally auditioned for Batman and Batman Begins. Really? Yeah. But I couldn't see it. Obviously, that. No. I couldn't see it either, but no, there's actually uh, real footage of him auditioning for Batman. Wow. And, uh... But, uh, no, I... 
that it obviously went to Christian Bale, but he got the role of the scarecrow anyway. So yeah, and I think that it fit him better anyway because there's just some actors that, I mean, could he have played Batman? Maybe, but who really knows? Um, but nobody's gonna top off Heath Ledger. But I have faith that Walking Phoenix will do really well because, like I said, he's a method actor, and that's what you need to do to become the Joker, not play the Joker. And um, I think that he's going to... The, the trailer was beautifully made. I just hope that the movie will be as much as what the trailer's hyping it up to be. Um, for sure, I, I can see it opening up very slow. I'm already going to say it, and I'm not trying to disappoint myself, but I think it's going to open up kind of slow. It's going to show him kind of like... I'm, I'm guessing the woman in the movie that he's like dancing with and taking care of is his mother because uh, he talks about her numerous times and I think he's going to be taking care of his mother and what's going to happen is his mom's probably going to die or something and then he's going to get the shit snot out. he's got snot beaten out of him a couple times from people and that's where he's going to um, turn over like whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you stranger yeah huh. yeah that's how I said and um, I think that it'll just be interesting how they're going to do the story. And I know a lot of people were kind of concerned, like, oh, it doesn't make sense. It's in the 80s. That wouldn't make sense with Bruce Wayne. He's a kid then. Yeah, we get it. But you don't really know how old the Joker really was. He didn't have a set age. Exactly. So that's why they, they're they able to get away with that. Heath Ledger was, what, 27, 28 when he did the and role he of could, the Joker? Exactly, the yeah. Way, like, then again, it doesn't really say exactly. that the Joker has a set age. He could be uh, walking, walking Phoenix. He could... Uh, I think he'll be a he, he'll be a good Joker. Like it doesn't make sense how it would take place in the eighties. Right. I mean, but they can do it. Yeah, they could. They could do whatever the fuck they want, just like Marvel. As long as they make a good movie, that's all I care about. And as long as it kind of makes sense, I'm okay with that. Because Marvel, they 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 do whatever the fuck they want. So, um, as long as DC, I know DC's had issues, but this is going to be totally different, and this is going to be. A great freaking film. This is gonna be an awesome film. I already have that. I have that tingling in my bones. I know it's gonna happen. It's gonna be good. When but does it come out? October. October. Oh no! You're gonna wait all summer. And then once October comes, then that movie's gonna come out. I guarantee how busy that movie theater is gonna be. And I guarantee we're gonna have like, the super nerds come out dressed as like the Joker or something. <laughs> <laughs> you were telling me about how like oh um when the when uh Star Wars movie came out there's somebody that was dressed as Mace Windu. Yep. <laughs> there's a couple people dressed They didn't like bring their lightsabers Jedi. too, did they? They did. Oh yeah. my god. Yep, right down to bring the lightsabers and everything. <laughs> we have like a Jedi about battle, like oh my god. Oh, Look out everyone. Oh. Keep your girlfriends close. Yeah, on second thought, I'll just see Star Wars another weekend when it plays again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's funny. Like, I don't like. I don't want to like make fun of people. Like, hey, if that's what makes people happy. That's great. Um, but like, to just see that, like, you can't help but laugh. Like, it's. Uh, I don't like have I said, a problem with it. No, as long as like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just not, funny. It's, it's not funny. My thing. Uh, if like I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. I'm not judging anybody who does, but as long as like you're not shouting throughout the whole movie and I'm like trying to hear important exposition like dialogue over your screens like oh my god, fuck movie. You know, stuff like that and oh my goodness, stuff like that. I it it drives me. It drives me nuts. It really does. I'm sorry, but like the, the I'm one trying time, to like focus on the movie, I think not that, like your screams of of uh, of approval of. Oh, we saw this guy in the other movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, people just have to kind of be mindful of. Hey, okay, you know what? Great. We know you're excited. But there are people that want to enjoy the movie. And I don't mind if you're dressing up or anything. But like, it's a little weird. But please hey, do not shout all over dialogue i'm trying it's like to hear well i'll tell you two things okay so first thing i will agree with that and 
the one time I went, I went to go see The Force Awakens when it first came out. I went opening night. It was a madhouse. But me and my sister got the good seats. Um, and yeah, when the opening credits came out, everyone's screaming like, woohoo! And they're like, they're like cheering and it's like, oh my god. It's like, yeah, we're excited. Like, I kind of even said, like, I kind of said it like very like soft. I was like, yes, yes. Like, I, I got really amped. Don't, like, I think anybody got excited. But everyone's like cheering like, yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, great. <laughs> but like, I want, I don't want you guys to ruin the freaking opening for me. Um, and then after everyone kind of calmed down. But when, like, when Han Solo came out of the picture with Chewie, I was like, everyone's like, everyone's cheering for him. I'm like, what are you cheering for? <laughs> I don't know what everyone's cheering for. It's like, okay. Well, I don't think it was like that. But, yeah, everyone's just like, yeah. Like, there, everyone's clapping. It's like, oh, my God. Can you, <laughs> can you not, can you please not, like, ruin the movie for me? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the second time I went, it was, um, oh, what was it? What movie was it? It was really packed. It was a Dark Knight Rises. And I went on opening night with a guy named Matt. And me and Matt, like, we're so excited to see this movie while we're sitting there. And Matt's already talking about, like, oh, I don't want, like, kids to, like, cheer in the movie. Or so. He said something really subtle like that. I haven't, I haven't seen Matt for a long time. Uh, he lives in Windsor, last I know. Um, but anyway... So me and my buddy Matt went to go see The Dark Knight Rises. It wasn't just me and Matt. It could have been me and Matt and his uh, buddy Chris, but maybe it was just me and Matt. Went to go see this movie, and there's one scene where... What was it? Oh, I think Bruce came out or something, and everyone started cheering. I hear some guy at the, um, at the bottom saying, Hey, shut the fuck up! <laughs> Just like that, I'm like, oh my god, dude! There's like children, kids in right here. Into, like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, there's children, kids. You know, right, like, I don't approve in swearing. Uh, I don't approve of swearing in front of children. But like, he does have a point. I would have just said, hey, would you mind taking some whispering lessons or something like that? Yeah, like, like, yeah. I mean, he went a little bit, a little bit extreme, just a touch. Um, but yeah, like it. Oh, that it that stuff drives me nuts, but hey, you know what? That's what you gotta expect if you want to see if you want to go see a movie on opening night, you know. Um, but yeah, like that's probably, I don't know. I've seen other stuff where yeah, like I think when I went to when I went to see The Dark Knight Rises, there was um, there was a <laughs> there was a big fat guy, there was a fat guy in uh. Did I go see that one with you too? Like I went again, I think. The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Dude, we all don't even think we knew each other back in two thousand twelve. Oh no, shit! No, it wasn't. Yeah, okay. But I just went with Matt, but I know I went to go see it again. No, was it? We went to go see Suicide Squad though. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I remember there was a guy. It was a big fat guy in, in like a, in um, a Batman, costume or something. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I know uh, there. I saw, I saw a fat guy in a bane suit when I. Yeah, saw <laughs> it was a bane suit. Was that's a, what it was. <laughs> to see the Dark Knight Rises. And and it was like really we didn't dress it up to see the movie. What if you get uncomfortable? You know. Uh, yeah, I think that's what you were telling me. I'm it was going, a bane guy. I'm going to take over all the donuts here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't be making fun of people like that, but. Um. <laughs> Well, you are. I'm not. Yeah, I know. I know. But no. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's interesting what people will do just to go to the movies, and I mean, but like I said, if they're happy, I don't know. I. The only thing that just gets under my skin is when people sure. over talk over important dialogue that I'm trying to hear. That's my only concern. I don't care if you dress up. It's not my thing. But if you do, you know, I, I salute you. I respect 100%. you for that. hundred percent. But just please keep quiet for the people who are trying to keep an open yeah. ear for dialogue and the story. They want to know which direction it goes. We don't need to hear a bunch of, whoa, and oh my God, remember that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I went to go see the movie, The Woman in Black. It's a horror movie. I saw that at the show, too. With Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter. That was really, really good. It's probably still one of my favorite, in my top 
50 favorite movies. I haven't seen it in a while, though. I think one... It's that, freaking, oh my it's God. fucking you know scary, man. I think the last time I saw that was actually when I saw it at the, sh- at the show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Like, it's fucking scary, man. Um, but there's a scene where... So, it looks like it's almost like... um. You know, in the because they live by the, he's the house that he's he's staying at is like by the marsh, right? So it's almost like um almost like mud or something on the on the door handle. <laughs> so there's this uh, I went with my uh, buddy that I used to be friends with not anymore, and there's a scene where it looks like there's like mud or grease or something on the doorknob, and there's this kid that we knew we knew his older sister. She was our age. And, but he was there, we knew who he was, all you hear is, so there's a door handle where he grabs that door handle, and it's like all, like, it gets all this black on his hands, he's like, mmm, grease that puppy. <laughs> I'm like, what the oh, fuck, dude? <laughs> like, like, whoa, so whoa, whoa, what was that? I've seen that movie, I, I, I'm gonna definitely need to watch it, because I do remember enjoying it when I saw it. So. It really, no, like, it really was good, uh, it, and it was actually scary. It was weird, I know that, like, all these ghosts in that, uh, in that place that he was at, all the jump scares got yeah. me spot on. Well, the, the part with, like, the rocking chair, I don't know why it's about rocking chairs, it's just freaky. Yes. Um, but, I don't know, it was just a really good, scary movie. Like, I wasn't sure if it was gonna be that scary, but I went to go see it because my mom wanted to. I think my mom was the first person I wanted to go see see it with and then i went to get i went to no the second time i went to see it was with my mom the first time was with was with my one buddy and like the second time i went to go see it i went with my mom and i always grabbed my mom's arm at the scary parts but even then i totally i totally forgot some of the other scary parts but there's a scene where there was one jump scare and i saw these girls in front of me and the popcorn went flying <laughs> like oh my god yeah Oh, it's funny, but I haven't seen a scary movie in the theaters in a long time. There's nothing that's intrigued me. Um, well, it's because they're all they're all stupid. Shit, in my opinion, anyway. They're just they're, like, there's hey, no original know. ideas. No. Um, like there's that remake, one remake reboot remake redo. reboots. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what Hollywood is all about. They don't have any more original ideas. Like. I would go see, like, maybe Friday the 13th, like, a remake, if they do a really good job. Or, like, something like that. Like, it wouldn't scare me, I don't think, but it would be really... Like, I like that kind of stuff. Like, even just, like, action kind of horror. Because I don't find it to be, like, horror. I find it to be more, like, an action kind of horror. Because it's, like, it's not too obvious. It's not too far from obvious, obvious who the killer is. Um... And you can kind of predict how someone's going to die because, for example, if you see that camera shooting on a girl going into the shower and then you see someone open up the door, it's like, hmm, most likely either it's going to be Jason and he's going to get her somehow or it's going to be, like, the boyfriend that, like, makes it look like it's going to be Jason but then he just comes in like, scares or grabs her by the ass or something and they're like, um, hey, like, or something like that. Fake outs. Fake outs, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, those movies are pretty good. Um, but with horror now, it's very, I think it's really hard to scare people these days because, um, there's so many things that I think the expectations have been higher for horror, horror films. Like I think the years, the couple of years where, um, where like, like the conjuring came out, um, insidious, a lot of these like more religious kind of horror movies. Yeah. It become more trends. Yeah horror movies exactly did you ever see the original texas chainsaw massacre oh yeah that was good that one was good well i actually went i watched that with the same guy that i used to be friends with um we kind of had a falling out um but we watched that and he actually i never heard him scream the scene where he comes out and, and like slices the guy in the wheelchair he actually screamed at that at that scene Oh yeah, and I thought that was like the funniest. Like I, I didn't even get scared because I was laughing. The thing at I him. like about the original one is that they actually act like there is legit something wrong with them upstairs. I mean, like yeah, this, there, there's definitely something wrong with these people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but then you see how horror changes. You know, like I think seventies was like, oh, I can't even describe seventies, but eighties was like the. The Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare Nightmare on Elm Street, yeah. and then nineties was kind of like Candyman and kind of like what I, what Scream, I, Scream, kind of like those kind of killer movies. You 
original Alien was really good too. I yeah, that movie. yeah, it was good too. Um, and then the two thousands was kind of like what I I knew what you did last summer kind of films, the, um, ring. the ring, things like that that started becoming more um, supernatural. And then and there's um, nothing wrong. I like the I like those horror movies. Maybe it's just a nostalgic thing, but I yeah I, I do have a certain respect for them. But like lately, oh, I I have no uh, reason to see a a horror movie other than the fact for oh it's a kids it's a kids summer movie now. Yeah. Um... But then you kind of see, and then from like 2012 to now, is kind of where you see the the more supernatural. So like I said, like The Conjuring, Insidious, and um, Insidious, uh, The Woman Black. Like very supernatural movies that are more like religious, <coughs> like more like religious uh, horror movies. Because I think religion is very scary. It's a very scary thing. Um like, I mean, I'm talking about the dark side of religion. Like, it's a very scary thing because it's, it's something that you can't see, but you can feel it, sense it. And um, I think that's why it's so scary in movies because people, it's, it's people a very real. It's over a, different beliefs. It's a very like, real I thing. I don't think people should fight <coughs> over that. Like, if you look in the 70s when they made Jaws, that was a very real thing because people. It's about a monster in the sea, man. Yeah, like, and then I mean, people didn't want to go in the water. Machine, yeah. People didn't want to go in the water. And then 80s was like Jason Voorhees, and I mean, that was more unreal. I mean, not saying that, it could happen, like, you never know what, what people are, are capable of doing. But then you look at Nightmare on Elm Street, and that was just big shit. But if you start looking at, like, some of the newer movies, and they're so real, because, well, one, a lot of them are based off of true events, or they're based off of, like, what actually happened. And... Um, like you look at Insidious, that's a very real thing. It's possible. Like they say that astro projecting is a, is a legit thing and, and people have done it. I'm not sure if you're going to see demons and stuff, but it's a you very... You never know what you're going to see. Um, would you mind giving me one minute? Oh, uh, sure. Okay. Yeah, so I just want to thank you for being on my podcast. and Thanks, man. It's good to be back. Thanks, man. I enjoy well... doing this, uh, this kind of stuff. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to do another one soon, man. Oh, for sure. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening, and we're out of here.